What's up guys? Today we've got the Tiny Mini Pro 3. This is a super popular board. All the derivatives of the, you know, since the Boosted Mini have been so popular. That's what I rode in college was a Boosted Mini with surf and rail adapter. So I'm really excited to show you guys the best way to install a waterborne fin system on this board and the boards like it. Let's dive into it. So front truck and rear truck. So if we look at the front of this board, we've got this riser on here, and this accounts for the curve of the deck. I think I'm gonna keep this riser um, because it makes a nice seat for the surf adapter. It's perfectly flat, so that's gonna match up with the surf adapter well. We don't have a ton of space between these mounting bolts and the battery box, so I'm gonna go with the furthest back, or furthest forward mounting option. That's gonna be our threaded holes, and I think for extra security, I'm gonna put nuts on top because this is an e-board. So let's get into it. I don't always use stock hardware, but anytime that it makes my life a little easier, I will do that. Put the front truck onto the surf adapter. And using the nuts from our kit, we can just zip these right onto the top. Okay, so if we take a look here, the wheel hits the battery box, but that is not going to be a problem for this board. We have this product called the Fin Limiter. This goes into a Fin System surf adapter and limits how far it can turn so that you don't get wheel bite against your battery boxes. To be honest, when you're riding an electric board and you're carving at 12 plus miles an hour, this is sort of the range that you're going to be in anyways. You're never going to be full bore needing that full um, range of motion of the surf adapter because at those speeds, you're making these tight, fast arcs and your surf adapter is only moving like that much. But anyway, let's get it in there. So you whip off that main nut, pull the two pieces of the surf adapter apart, and then you can see you've got these holes here, and those are for these pins. So that's going to lock the fin limiter in place, and then we just install it right back on, nice and snug, and then you can see, boom, boom, boom and we're not getting wheel bite anymore. So for the rear, we're going to use a rail adapter. For those of you that don't know, a rail adapter is something that gives your rear truck a lot more lean, and it makes the rear wheels track in line with the board while the front does all the turning. Now the first thing I notice is this thing has got huge honking motors. These things are massive, and there's not a ton of space for our kingpins. So what we actually had to do is offer a rail adapter with shorter kingpins. So these are the normal rail adapter kingpins and here are the new ones. It might not look like a ton but when you're dealing with packaging issues like this a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch makes a huge difference. That's the difference between these kingpins rubbing against our motors and having clearance. So, we are going to stack one block riser and then our rear truck. And if you look, we've got space in there, no scratchy scratches. So that's the plan. Now on the deck side, I'm adding a riser here, so ideally we will eliminate this riser so that the front and back ride level. Now we've got an accessory cable here. I'm just going to push this little lever, pop that apart, and off comes our rear uh, tail light. And then in the surf adapter kit, we have these little foam gaskets. And what I'm going to do is just fold this off to the side so that it's there should we ever want to put this board back to stock 
or put the um, put that accessory back on and I'm gonna pop those on and again that gasket is gonna mold around our wires and protect them so we're gonna use these bolts to go in between the rail adapter riser and rear truck and replace the ones that go from deck to rail adapter with one of the bolts in the kit what I'm looking for are the one inch Phillips head countersunk bolts. Set these aside for in a minute and then put our new hardware through. So it looks like our best mounting option is going to be going into the threaded holes on the base plate of the rail adapter. That was easy. So, now I'm gonna pull the rail adapter apart so I could get access to the heads of these bolts while we secure them to the bottom of our rear truck. So let's zip that apart real quick. So if you ever wanna replace your rail adapter bushings, this is how you do it. You pull off your nuts and that gives you access to your cone bushings and then off comes the pivoting side and you have access to your barrel bushings and then these are inserts that go into the pivot plate and keep it from uh, making any noise That's it. and while we have access to the heads of these bolts um, just like we did with the front I'm gonna go ahead and put on a nut just to be safe because I do not have blue Loctite on me and this is gonna keep them from spinning loose over time Soft bolts, getting a new life. I want it like this. Okay, and just like that, we've got the pivoting plate attached to the rear truck. So now I'm going to invert it and set it down onto its kingpins. Looks pretty good. To make access both for me and the camera easier, I'm going to pull off the rear hanger, which maybe would actually make it easier to install the rear the rear truck uh, all together just by pulling off this hanger. I don't know. Maybe that's how I should have done it. But anyway, now we can get to the other kingpin of the rail adapter. Okay, so this thing is ready to ride. You can already see it gets a ton more lean, a ton more turn. This is going to make it zip through crowds like nothing. You'll be able to do 90 degree turns on the tightest sidewalks or parking structures. Um, I am really excited to try this thing out, so let's go rip it up. And if there's anything that we need to adjust, we'll come right back in and do it. Let's hit it. All right, doing a little shakedown. You know what? We're scratching. We are scratching. You're gonna need one more black riser? Yeah. I mean, probably. Might help in the front too. Oh, I so don't wanna do that though. I'm trying to think if there's like any option. This is a tough one. You know, I don't wanna make the board absurdly tall but I also don't want scratchy scratches on these motors wasn't expecting that I don't know what to do yeah was an, I <laughs> must have kicked it into reverse 
I don't know, if I can't ride it the way I want to ride it, it's not ready yet. Okay, we're gonna try the easy way, and if that doesn't work, we'll try something else. Okay. Let's, let's put some harder bushings in here and see if we could immobilize our way out of this problem. Stop some things from moving and see if we could isolate exactly what it is that's causing the motors to rub against the front uh, rail adapter kingpin. We have got rail adapter uh, 97.5A bushings, or as I like to call them, rocks. Let's pop these in the trucks and see what happens. So I typically recommend putting really hard bushings on your rear truck, um, not just for like clearance issues, but just for ride. You get a lot more stability out of your board if your rear truck is not turning and it's just leaning. Like on all my jet boards, um, I run these in the rear trucks. So let's see if it solves this pr problem too. I typically leave the rail adapter bushings soft because that's where I want my movement with the exception of if a board is really heavy, an electric board is really heavy, then you need harder bushings in the rail adapter or it's, it's like riding on marshmallows. Oh my gosh, that did something. That did something. Look at that. No motor rub. No motor rub. Oh, I was a little nervous there. That did the trick. Take a look. So that's what was rubbing. You could see the line on the motor where it was touching. And now that we have these really hard bushings in there, boom, nothing. Look, plenty of space, right? We're, we're miles away. Okay, let's ride. Stoked again. <laughs> That thing's got power, oh my gosh. This thing has got more power than a lot of big boards. Okay, so now that I know I'm not rubbing the motors, damaging my buddy's board, I can actually put this thing on rail and enjoy it much better, much better. Look at that. Now we have a real board here. Falling through the ground. What's up guys? It's a new day, uh, same board, because I went and delivered this board to the owner, James, and I was kind of describing to him that like, it's not totally wheel bite proof, it'll still bite if you put your force on it at low speed. Um, and I was kind of trying to demonstrate that and couldn't really get it to bite all that hard. 
And I go, okay, whatever. And I just start pumping the board, no power or anything. And out of nowhere, the thing bites so hard and just slams me to the ground. I felt like a, like a cracked egg. I hit so hard. So we are coming back to the drawing board to fix this situation, even with the fin limiter. The fact is these wheels, 105s, they're just too big. These are the cloud wheels, um, but they're still the same diameter as the ones we were using earlier this week. And yeah, they're just too big. When we originally designed the solution for the boosted mini and you know the Mepos that we work with, those are running I think 90 millimeter wheels, and it's just a it's a different ball game when you when you start increasing the diameter. It gets it gets like exponentially harder to get them to not bite. So let's throw an extender bracket on it and make this thing a little bit safer. So the first thing I want to try, because it worked for the rear truck, maybe it'll work for the front, let's put some of these 97.5 Riptide bushings in the front and see if that can immobilize the hanger enough um, to prevent wheel bite. Yeah. We'll only take a sec. So one thing people might be wondering is like, why not just tighten this down as tight as possible? You know, wouldn't that help prevent wheel bite? It could, but also as you tighten this nut, you're going to pull that axle closer and closer and closer to the base plate and therefore closer and closer to the battery enclosure. Um, so that's why. So if these don't do the job, then we will have to try maybe an extender bracket. Better, but... I can feel it rubbing, so I don't know, but it's definitely better. Like, I've got to push a lot harder. You can kind of hear it. Whoom, whoom. I think we can do better um, than that. And I do not want to fall again. <laughs> so, let's dive into this board. Let's get it apart and throw the extender on. thought about that this is a new school volt pattern and on the extender it's reversed for stiffness this just got a lot more tricky I had never imagined that this board would be this complicated you know I kind of in my mind thought it would be like almost like any other electric board where where these solutions just like slap on Probably the easiest thing to do would be to run a drill through these holes and put an extra two holes in the deck. Um, I don't like it because then it's not bolt-on anymore and you're modifying the existing board. James, thoughts? Do your thing. Um, he's going to throw a hole on what? the back. <laughs> yeah, I would just want to ride the board. I mean, that's what it takes. That's what it takes, right? Okay. I guess we got to drill it. We gotta drill it. I wanted to kind of juxtapose that to something like this Meepo V5. You can see they left um, a ton of space between the front mounting bolts and battery box. And that means not only is it really easy to fit aftermarket stuff like our trucks and the extenders and whatnot, but also look at the, how much space there is. You know, we're using a fin limiter and this board ever bites. I've never had it get wheel bite as hard as I've ridden. Um, so that's just kind of like the difference. You know, this is something that, in my opinion, takes really well to aftermarket modifications. And something like the Tiny, um, some of the tolerances, some of the clearances between components do not afford modification um, in the same way that other brands do. But anyway, back to the build. I found a drill bit that fits the pre-existing hole in this spacer, and that's actually going to guide us right through the deck. Are they long enough? Yes! They're long enough. That's a win. Alright, and now we're going to take some of our red bolts, the pan head bolts, 
and we're going to use these to mount the surf adapter to the extender. Miles from danger. Look at that. Miles from danger. Put a bike wheel on it. You'll be fine. We have the space. We're not going to get wheel bite, so we might as well get a little bit more travel and flow. And then now I'm going to set the bushings back to stock because where possible, I like to have a soft, gummier, you know, kind of bushing in the front truck so that you get better flow. Let's put it back together. So now look. <laughs> did I speak too soon? I think I did. Over and over, eating my words and taking my foot and you know, in and out of my mouth. I'd love to say, oh, but you'll never be turning this hard in an electric board. You'll be going too fast, like I said earlier this week. But guess what? I turned that hard, I went that fast, and I ate crap. We're doing two, we're doing two Riptide kits. One set of barrels for the rear truck, one set of barrels for the front. So kind of like how I expected, you know, with the extender on, it's a longer board. It's like riding, it's riding more like a long board. It feels more like a long board than a, you know, than your little campus cruiser type thing. Um, but it feels really good. I'm like, you know, I could relax a little bit more because it's got a bigger turning circle. I'm comfortable. I'm not like, uh, I don't feel like I'm riding on a hyena. That's how I felt last time. Riding a hyena. And it really, you know, nice smooth carbs and all that, but now I'm riding a dolphin. And it's like, what would you, what would you rather ride? A hyena or a dolphin? Yeah. Okay, so we kind of came full circle. I jumped into this project thinking that I'd be able to set up this board in 20 minutes, throw a fin limiter on it, maybe do something funny with the block risers, um, and job done. No sir, no ma'am. This thing it definitely fought uh, every step of the way to make itself one of the most complicated builds. If you have one of these, that's not what you wanted to hear, I'm sorry, but I hope that the video, you know, taking you step by step, makes this process a little more approachable. I wish it was easier for both of our sakes, but ultimately, in recap, starting from the front, my recommendations are 97.5A Riptide bushings, the hardest ones, um, barrels, in the front truck, thin system surf adapter, um, or regular surf adapter, but at least since you're not using the fin limiter, um, you could use the blue wedges. Anyway, extender bracket, rear truck, also 97.5A barrels to keep this thing pretty much immobilized, waterborne riser, single riser, the bolts, that normally hold the deck to the truck in the stock configuration. Take those bolts and put them here. 
and then use one of the bolts in the kits to mount the um, deck to the rail adapter. And that's that. Oh, and remove the stock rear riser and pull the little accessory cable to the side before you tighten it all together. So that's the recipe for this build. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I had a lot of fun on it. James, your thoughts? I think you did it. It's done. Do <laughs> you want to? No, we're good. No. Okay. But what, what did you think of the ride? Your first impression? I like it. I think uh, the whole idea was to get a better turn radius on the shortboard, and uh, it, the surf adapter did that. So happy with it. All right. Mission accomplished. That, you know, so thank you. Peace. Until next time. Thank you.